Danny Sprinkle gets his man. Great Osibor is coming to Washington. You are Locked On Huskies, your daily podcast on the Washington Huskies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back into another edition of the Lockdown Huskies podcast. I'm Roman Tomashoff. That's Lars Hansen. He's the site editor with App on Sports is inside the Huskies. I'm the site editor with Huskies Wire. Thank you for making this your hopefully second watch or listen of the day outside of our morning show. Lars, we are coming at all the Everdares with a special bonus edition because great Osabor, a top 10 player in the transfer portal, has followed his old head coach, Danny Sprinkle, from Utah State up to Washington. And this is just such a massive addition to the roster. I don't feel like we can say that enough because of all the other pieces on the roster. This is kind of just that, that extra, that cherry on top. The, okay, is this a really talented roster? Now it goes. Exactly. But this is why, as we said on our Monday morning show, you build the roster first. You don't go and say, Hey, Greg, here's, $5 $5 million, which we'll get into that later on, but it's not that number. But I'm just saying, you, you don't just throw like 10 bring trucks at him and say, hey, just come. We need you to make the splash the splash transfer. It's We know you're probably going to end up following us because you, fo- you follow Danny Sprinkle from Montana State to Utah State and Utah State now to Washington. And also, he wasn't that highly recruited, surprisingly, coming out of England. So it wasn't like he had a long list of, you know, the top blue bloods to choose from initially coming out. So with all that prior relationship and connection, it was assumed that he would, Greg Edwards would follow Danny Sprinkle to Washington. But in order to still have that come to fruition, you need to show great. We're not just going to say, hey, you're getting 20, you know, 20 shots a game and we're just going to lean on you and and call it good. No, we actually want to make this a legitimate NCAA tournament team. And in order to do that, yeah, we need you as a centerpiece. But a centerpiece is only good when you have all those other adjacent pieces around him working in tandem to make it all go. Because I can totally see Great Osterberg averaging, you know, 25, 30 points a game if he's like the star attraction and that's it. But you're probably not winning a ton of games. Of, you know, we saw that, right? When you had Keon Brooks and, and Isaiah Stewart. So that's what I was going to say, yeah. One, one or two guys is great. But that doesn't make you a tournament team. Building an actual roster, which is what Danny Sprinkle has done, gets you into the tournament. But you can't also do that without having that key central piece of great support. Absolutely. And that's the biggest thing about this, where I put out a tweet saying, this edition makes Washington have one of the best – better rosters in the big 10. And I fully stand by that statement because it's not just, all right, you plop this guy in like a Keon Brooks where he's going to get 20, 25 shots a game, as you said, but it's because, all right, you've got a DJ Davis around him. Who's going to be a nice piece. You've got Jace Butler and zoom Diallo who are two promising freshmen. You get Makai Mason in there. Who's a nice scorer. You get Louise Courtright from Rhode Island and you know, you get Frank Kepnock back. Who's going to be really, really big. You get Tyler Harris in the door and you get so many of these just I don't want to say big names because they're they're not, but they're talented basketball players who are going to run Danny Sprinkle's system well. And that's the biggest difference, in my opinion. That's one of the reasons I'm going to stand by that statement is because when I look at this team, I see a roster that Danny Sprinkle can work with that is built exactly kind of how he had it built at Utah State, where it's I, I get talented players who can run my system and do it effectively. Whereas Mike Hopkins on offense that never really felt like there was a system, but that's a different discussion for a different day. And that I feel like that's the biggest difference here with great because he does everything you need on both ends of the floor. He's a really good defender. He averaged 1.4 blocks and 1.3 steals per game at Utah State. And then, of course, he averaged almost 18 and 9, where, hey, that's that's really all you need on both ends of the floor. And we're going to keep going with this because there really is so much more to talk about with that. Right after a message from our good friends over at FanDuel, because it's winner take all time in the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. You can visit FanDuel.com slash lockdown and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel is America's number one sports book. So, Lars, one of my favorite things about watching Great Osabor is that it's not like, you know, because it's somebody where I feel this this can happen a lot at some of these lower levels where you watch somebody like him and it's, oh, he's, you know, 6'8", 245, 250. 
he just beats up on everybody. No, that's that's not how he plays the game at all. He's just de- developed such a nice arsenal of post moves where he's not somebody who I would consistently rely on in the Keon Brooks mold to pull up from 15, 17 feet out, but he's somebody who has so many different ways to get to the rim and finish down low, and he finishes with touch, and he's just so much fun to watch in so many different areas of Danny Sprinkle's offense that this is why he just makes everything go. There are so many different pieces around him that are going to do a solid job, but now really he kicks it into an extra gear. Yeah. In my background and doing some research for the story that I wrote on Friday that we as both of us, both of us wrote that story on Friday. I had to yep. wait until Monday morning to, to publish it. But one of the cool things that I did in learning that research was go back about three years to, before uh, great Osibor was a freshman in Montana state. Danny Sprinkle did a sit down interview with great Osibor. And in that interview, this was after a couple of weeks after he had come over from England, he he acknowledged like I had the mentality of Kobe Bryant and basically every and my other favorite player is Giannis Antetokounmpo. So just when you look at what Great Osborne is on the court, you can kind of see that where he plays hard, he plays tough, he's got that Mamba mentality, he's got that grit, he's got that ability to log 33, 35, 38 minutes if he needs to. Yeah, and still be as effective as a scorer, not just being out there as a big body on the floor. But he's also freakishly gifted. Like it does not come around very often that you have a six eight, two hundred and fifty pound absolute just bulldozer of a guy who can who also can pull up. And I think the, that's the thing is he's not just a big like a a Frank Capnall Shack, you know, just a big high flying yeah. dunker or like a Zion, right? Where Zion was a guy where known for his dunking could kind of shoot. But I think great Ospor can actually shoot in a consistent level just as much. I just don't think that's what he's going to be asked to do more often than not. So I want to, it's, this isn't a comparison because they play very different styles, but the one guy who he reminds me of kind of down low and just the way he uses his body reminds me of another Husky from England from back in the day. Lars, there's a deep cut for you. Matthew Brian Amining, one of my favorite Husky basketball players of all time. I love watching him so much. And there, there are certain things that reminds me of him, just kind of the way he is around the rim, just how well he uses his body at the something I feel that NBA always did really, really well, but I'm just, I'm really excited about what this means for the roster because this rounds out the starting, the starting lineup, which you and I'll talk a little bit more about that on another day, but it rounds out the starting lineup. And then this also just gives Washington a deeper bench where, you know, we already talked about some of these guys in the backcourt and some in the front court as well. But the more you look up and down this roster, the more you say, okay, yeah, this is this is a pretty complete lineup where, you know, there's there's a little bit of depth in the front court. There's certainly a lot of depth in the back court and the wings is a little bit of a different different story where I feel that, you know, depending on what the the roster is, is going to look like if somebody might, you know, still end up leaving the program, one of these these Hopkins guys that are still sitting around, but there's there's a lot to like about this roster and I feel like it couldn't end up being a top 25 roster, but there's one thing we need to talk about, Lars, and that's great. Orsabor has reported two million dollar NIL deal, and we'll get there right after a message from our friends over at LinkedIn. Because when you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. That's because LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In any given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. You can hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn because LinkedIn knows that small businesses are wearing so many hats and might not have the time or resources to hire. And that's why two and a half million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. You can post your job for free at linkedin.com slash lockdown college. That's linkedin.com slash lockdown college. Post your job for free terms and conditions apply. So Lars, we, we got to, I don't, I don't think this is the elephant in the room, but Washington reportedly has given great or a $2 million NIL deal. And let's be upfront about this. This does not mean that they said, Hey, here's a duffel bag with $2 million in cash. This is as the, the Motlake futures way goes, as you're very familiar with the, some of the, the awesome people over there is this is okay. You'll be in, you know, maybe some commercials like we saw Michael Penix in a couple of, you're going to go to events. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And it's not just, here's a whole bunch of money. 
like some other schools might do. And this makes him the highest paid player that is known. That is that that is known out there. Let's 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 also put that caveat on there, where there certainly could be players out there that are making more than this. But that's that's just what was reported. And Washington basketball really they they shelled out for this one. And it's exactly what we said on the show or on Monday show, Monday morning show, right? Since this is still Monday morning, but in our pre Monday morning show, where that you had to. You, and we also, to be fair, did have this conversation off the air and off the record, where you you have to go. You yeah. and you you can't you can't get. It's like doing to equate this to football. It's like starting from the one yard line, driving ninety five yards down the field, and then end up settling for a field goal. No, no, no. You're punching it in. You go for it on fourth and goal. If you somehow don't get it, so right. be it. But there was no way that you were not going to be able to close this door, knowing you probably didn't. And again. Some people will say, oh, hey, well, they gave him $2 million. It's like, again, it's worth noting as you broke down, it comes over the, the it would come over the time that he's at Washington. Once he enrolls, once he starts doing some marketing campaigns, we see that a lot, you know, with guys supporting nonprofits. That's the best way to do it, where you can, you know, go to do a community event, post a couple of things, call it a day. You do that over the course of your time at Washington. It makes more, more sense than not. But having said all that, you couldn't, there was no way around this where you didn't necessarily, yes. I'm, what I'm getting at is you didn't have to necessarily be the highest bidder, but it was just, okay, if that's what it takes, so be it to close the deal. I don't think necessarily it did because as we said in the opener, there was no way, and this, this is how I led my story on Athlon Sports, Athlon, they were inseparable. Danny Sprinkler and Great Oats were inseparable. There's no way that Louisville or Texas Tech offering an additional 300k was going to get him to go away from Washington. It just had to say, but really what this does to your point, it makes Washington a destination of sorts where you can yeah. now kids can where we can talk about in the 25, 26, 27 classes Danny Sprinkle spends more years in Washington, he can say, "Hey, I had a 2 million dollar guy, now I got a 2.5, now I got a 3." You know, it's almost like an auctioneer where you're saying, "Okay, like, hey, just you're, you're getting that attention to your program and you're also investing in a player who absolutely deserves it. This isn't 100%. going and getting Bronny James and saying, Hey, we just want the name. This is, Hey, I've spent three years with you. Let's finish the journey out here. It's, it's, it's all that working together. It's not one or the other. And I think that's yeah. worth noting. Absolutely. Because this is somebody, as you said, who has worked for this, who started in the big sky with Danny Sprinkle, follows him to Utah State, now follows him again to Washington. And it's just kind of the fruits of his labor are being rewarded. And that part of it is really cool to see because he certainly, Louisville was certainly offering a similar deal. Texas Tech was certainly offering a similar deal. That's, uh, we, we don't have numbers like that were, that are 100% known, but it, it, we can't sit here and act like this is, oh, Washington was the only school offering this deal. No. Let's 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 not even begin to go down that road. And Lars, we're going to have so much more to say on this on our Tuesday show, because this is just a special little bonus episode. We want to make sure we got out there for the everyday. So thank you for being here. Thank you all the everyday for tuning in. We really hope you enjoyed this because this this is a, a really, really exciting transfer for Washington's program. And if you enjoy the content, please make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, whether it's YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon Music. We're there. We're everywhere. Updating this channel with new content every single day. Please make sure you click that little bell so you never miss when we post a special bonus video like this because with some big commitments that might be coming up over the next couple of weeks, we're probably going to do some more of those. Make sure you comment down below if you have questions, comments, concerns, anything like that. If you're audio only, please leave us a five-star review as it all does really help us out. Thank you so much for tuning in and we'll talk to you on Tuesday.